Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Administrator Nolan, as you know very well, 346 people were killed in two horrific crashes um, because Boeing and the FAA took their eye off the ball when it came to certification of the 737 MAX. In response, Congress enacted AXA to ensure that what led to those two crashes would not happen again. It's been over two years since AXA's enactment, and we now have the opportunity to reflect. Aviation safety isn't static, and it's not something we can take for granted. Instead, we have to be constantly looking to identify safety trends and find areas that can be improved. In your opinion, have the reforms that Congress has enacted already sufficiently addressed the prior safety concerns in the wake of the MAX? Uh, thank you, Senator Cruz, for the question. Uh, I do believe so. And number one, uh, we, we readily uh, accept the direction that Congress provided to the agency on this point. We have, we've enacted over 60% of the requirements of AXA, and we, we are working very purposefully to ensure that we get them all done. We are starting to see the benefits, again, with the uptake in the number of SMSs that are in place. As I spoke to earlier, nearly 60 plus five among the major design and manufacturing organizations. We are starting to see that level of transparency that we always expected to have. There is more work to be done. We want to make sure through our oversight process that our engineers, our inspectors, our managers in the field feel that they are getting the right kind of information, whether it be from an airline or whether it be from an OEM. Uh, and, and we will continue. That's something, the work is never gonna be done. We'll just continue to work that, sir. So the chairwoman and I are working together on a FAA reauthorization which will provide an important opportunity to make further safety reforms that may be necessary. In your judgment, are there aspects to either FAA's authority or discretion or direction from Congress that needs to be changed or improved in the area of certification? We believe, sir, uh, thank you for the question. We believe that one of the areas we'd like to see uh, is the SMS for part 145 operators as we're working through the progress as one that is not in that proposal. We have it for part 135, we have it for air tour operators, and we have it certainly for OEM. So we believe that's something we'd love to be able to work with you on that for part 145 repair stations. Okay, that's helpful. Um, let me ask you, just, just on Monday in Boston, two United Airline planes clipped wings prior to takeoff. Also on Monday, a passenger on a United flight, again going to Boston, I don't know what it is in the water in Boston, was arrested after trying to open a door mid-flight and, and stabbing a flight attendant with a broken off spoon. What the heck is going on in air travel? Well, sir, uh, thank you again, thank you for the question. I, let me just address the unruly passengers. We have set a poly, a zero, zero tolerance policy around unruly passengers, misconduct in the air, and I can assure you that we will take every, every step, every tool that we have at our disposal to ensure that, that certain, the action takes place against any perpetrator. It is just simply not allowed. So, so, so what would have happened if he had succeeded in opening the door mid-flight? Let me just say, sir, that uh, on a pressurized flight, these, uh, it's a plug-type door, so it is over-pressurized, so he would not have been able to open the door in flight uh, while it's pressurized. That being said, it still is not the kind of behavior you would expect to see. Well, that's, that's encouraging, and uh, let me ask a, a different set of questions. Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Nolan, you're a pilot, is that right? Yes, sir. Uh, how many airlines did you work for prior to being at the FAA? Three. Three. Which ones? American Airlines, Qantas, and WestJet. And at those airlines, what was your role, and did you work specifically in aviation safety? I had, I had multiple roles. Uh, I was in regulatory affairs uh, at, at one point in my career at American Airlines. I was a training captain at one point in my career. Uh, I worked in executive safety and group health during my role at Qantas. Uh, I was the uh, president, vice president of safety, security, and quality during my time at WestJet. You know, a point I would make, particularly to my Democrat colleagues on this committee, as you listen to Acting Administrator Nolan testify today, ask yourself a simple question. 
Do you think Phil Washington could come anywhere close to Acting Administrator Nolan's expertise and knowledge? I think the honest answer would have to be no. I think this is an agency that is incredibly important and is literally entrusted with keeping, protecting our lives and the lives of our children. And the Biden administration needs a Senate-confirmed administrator, the FAA, and I would encourage the chairwoman and, and the Democrats on this committee. I think it's clear Phil Washington is not going to have the votes to be confirmed. And I think the White House should withdraw that nomination and nominate someone like Acting Administrator Nolan. That, this is a nominee who, by all appearances, has the qualifications we expect for someone to lead the FAA. And in the interest of the flying public, I think a, a nomination like Mr. Nolan uh, would likely receive widespread bipartisan support, and I would expect he would be confirmed quickly. And uh, I hope that calmer voices in the White House prevail and that they go forward with a nomination that can succeed.